we're Pastors Jerry and Julie Jenkins, Addiction Free in Christ, a ministry of miracles. And this whole TV series is about the truth about addiction. So Julie, we're going to be talking about the truth about addiction today. I want to share something with you. The other day, God woke me up out of a sound sleep about 2 o'clock in the morning. He does that quite often. And we have a long conversation together. But anyhow, the other morning he woke me up, and out of a clear blue sky, he said, Jerry, I want to talk to you about what is addiction? What actually is addiction? He says, I want you to go to Ecclesiastics, the very first chapter. And so he took me there. And of course, that's all about vanity and vanity and vanity, right? And so you, we got a couple of verses there you wanted to read to us, the first couple of verses, didn't you? About what it was it saying, Ecclesiastics, the first chapter? Okay, Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, says the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? And it goes on to say in verse 8, um, All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. Verse 9, that which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Okay, and he talked about can never be satisfied, right? Yes. That's what all addiction is. Addiction is where we can never be satisfied. And you know, I got to thinking about that. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning, like I say, and, and I was sitting there thinking about that, and all of a sudden God started speaking to me. He said, it makes no difference who you are. It makes no difference whether you're the president of the United States or a ditch digger somewhere, you know, doing a job to, to help people get their plumbing put in or whatever the case may be. Or if you're out working on the highway, filling up potholes. Or if you're a banker or a doctor or a lawyer or an Indian chief, it makes no difference who you are. Because the only thing that makes any difference is someday no matter who you are, no matter what your profession is, no matter how important you are or how you just feel that you're not important to anybody, that nobody loves you. God loves you. God loves everybody. But the facts of life are, and the facts about addiction are, that someday every one of us are going to step, in, step into eternity. And when we step into eternity, our heart stops. We're going to step into eternity. And we're going to go to either heaven or hell. It doesn't make an, any difference how important I was. It doesn't make any difference if you're a preacher with the largest church in the United States. You're no different. You're no different to God than somebody that's a waitress somewhere in a restaurant. The only makes, thing that makes any difference to God is have you died to your selfish, sinful nature? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? Amen? Amen? And to do so, I have to die to my selfish, sinful nature. I must, I must die to live for God. Not physically die, but I must die to my selfish, sinful nature to surrender my life to Christ. That's what salvation is. And so, <laughs> you ought to just sit down and read Ecclesiastics, the first chapter, completely. And just let that run through your mind. And then you go over to the other part, and it talks about vanity, vanity, vanity. And then it goes on and talks about there's a season for everything. You know, there's a season for everything in heaven and earth. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to, to dig up what was planted. And that, you know, those two chapters are really interesting. Because they will really bring you to some soul searching. You know... I've been in ministry for 32 years now, helping people, trying to help, trying to help people, anyhow, find freedom from their addictions. And in those 32 years, things have changed a lot. God woke me up again one time, it's been in 2010, I journal a lot when he tells me something. In 2010, he woke me up one morning, and he said, Jerry, it's going to be Harder and harder to harder to bring people to Jesus Christ 
as time goes on. And harder and harder to keep them there once you bring them to Christ. And I thought, boy, that sounds awful hard, God, because at that time there was pretty much a pretty decent revival going on in 2010, at least in the ministry I was working in. We had people surrendering their life to Jesus Christ and being delivered from alcohol and smoking and drugs and sexual addiction or whatever the case may be. And it seemed like things were going pretty well. And I thought, well, that, you know, how about all these people that we just led to Christ? It's going to be harder to keep them there? Well, that was in 2000. This is 2019. That's only 19 years ago. And today I want to tell you something. It is harder and harder and harder to bring people to Jesus Christ. And it is definitely harder and harder and harder to keep them there. And so just exactly what he told me in 2000 is going on right now. This is what we're, we're dealing with today. And we're finding today it's harder and harder and harder to bring people to Jesus Christ. And it's harder and harder. Once they accept Jesus, it's harder and harder to keep them there. The world we live in today with electronic devices, the world we live, on, live in today is a whole different world than we was living when we started this 32 years ago, when we started working with people. And so today, I want to share one thing with you, and I want, I want you to really just think about this for a minute. I don't care who you are. I don't care how important you are or how unimportant you think you are. There's only one thing that matters, and that's where are you with Jesus Christ? Have you surrendered your life to Him, and are you living for Him? Are you spending quality time in prayer and Bible study every day? Have you got, found a good church home that you're in? You know, the other thing is, today I noticed that a lot of us have got hooked on numbers. You know, how many people are in my church service every Sunday morning? How large is the offering? How many people are coming to the altar? You know, all that really doesn't really make any difference. The only thing that makes any difference, are you truly sharing the truth with the people? Are you sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ? And sometimes, if you are, they're not too happy about it. My, my, my mama used to tell me, Julie, truth hurts, don't it? <laughs> and it does hurt sometimes. We have to get back to the basics. We have to get back to God's word. Where it says, vanity, 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 everything is vanity. That's true. It doesn't make any difference if I've been sharing the truth with people for 32 years, 34 years, 50 years, or what. The only thing that's going to make any difference is have I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ? And have I totally committed my life to Christ? And am I sharing the truth out of the Word of God? Right, Julie? Amen. Amen. And um, we want to bring up to you about this upcoming addiction seminar on April 27th. It's going to be held at the Quincy Senior and Family Resource Center, 639 York Street. And if you need to know where that is, just give us a call. But we need you to pre-register for this seminar. If you'd like to meet Jerry and myself and, and Joel Tischer, uh, who's going to be speaking at the seminar, he's uh, an eth anesthetist. He's retired, a CRNA retired uh, with 38 years in the medical profession. And also Detective Adam Gibson of the Quincy Police Department will be speaking also. If you'd like to meet these people and find out more about what you can do or, or to get help, uh, this is a great place, a great opportunity to learn a lot. It's an educational seminar that's free to the public and you can register by calling 217-617-5577 or you can email us at revjerry at addictionfreeinchrist.com. But yeah, please give us a call and we'd be happy to help you with any of your questions about this addiction seminar. But uh, going back to, oh, also we have um, uh, special music with uh, Donette Douglas of WTJR at the seminar, Darlene Chalkley, special speaker Jody Douglas, who's going to give her 
uh, amazing testimony and Pastor Mike McKenzie. So we're looking forward to uh, to this seminar and there's a lot of speakers. The anointing's going to be on this seminar. So God's going to be healing people as they speak and also educating at the same time. So it does two things. You can get your... Uh, your CEUs through this uh, seminar also. So now what's that, Julie? So if someone needs uh, credit for, credit for yeah. work, a lot of people they have certain quotas they have to make per year, so many meetings, so many seminars, and so what we do is we generate this little certificate that says that uh, they've attended the seminar. But, you know, it's interesting when going back to Ecclesiastes, it says in Ecclesiastes 3.11, I'll start with 10, 3.10, I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful, I mean God, has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to the end. So God is eternal and he has put uh, eternity in our hearts through our relationship with Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. You know, God, used, he dwells in a temple. Uh, in the Old Testament, you see his Shekinah glory come down on the Ark of the Covenant. And now in the New Testament, uh, Jesus Christ, who is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek, who offered up his own self, dwells in us through the Holy Spirit. So that's why Jesus said you must be born from above. Flesh gives birth to flesh, spirit gives birth to spirit. So that's why it says in the scripture, you must be born again. And Jesus wants to come into your life. He wants to do that for you. And um, there's so much going on in this organization. Jerry wants to share with so, you. So how do, we, how do we go about this? So you said that Jesus wants to come in our life. Jesus wants to be in our life. How do we go about this, getting Jesus in our you life? You know, asking Jesus into your life is simple as a prayer. And did you know that prayer is a supernatural event? You may think that uh, you're just a normal human being, but you're not. Uh, you're beyond what you see in the, in the physical realm. There's a spiritual realm, and Jesus, your Savior, wants to connect with you. Uh, the Heavenly Father wants to connect with you. And so the way you do that is just say a simple prayer, Lord Jesus, will you please come into my heart? We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have paid the penalty. You died for my sins on Calvary. And uh, not only that, you cleansed me. That sacrifice is eternally present through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that he makes all things new. And so, Lord, we just ask you to touch the viewer right now in Jesus' name and ask the Holy Spirit to be upon them. Impart the Holy Spirit into their lives so that they can be totally free of whatever is trying to control them. So, Lord, we just surrender to you right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for your power, your grace, your mercy that you shed on on through your shed blood of Christ on Calvary. And not only that, that you rose again on the third day mm -hmm. and that you ascended and that you're coming back soon, Lord Jesus, uh, to bring all things into fulfillment through scripture. And we thank you for being a part of this program today. And stay tuned next week because we're going to talk some more about what amazing things God has to do. And I just 